from the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 7, streaming now. And we begin tonight with new developments in the Drejan Reed shooting investigation. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullen. A special prosecutor appointed to oversee the investigation is requesting a grand jury. Madison County Deputy Prosecutor Rosemary Curry says the grand jury process would be the final task of the investigation into the May 6 shooting death of 21-year-old Dre John Reed. A grand jury could decide whether an indictment should be brought against Indianapolis police officer DeJore Mercer, who fatally shot Reed during a foot chase that followed a vehicle pursuit. Four Muncie police officers have been cleared of any wrongdoing in the police shooting death of a man last month. 30-year-old Tyler Warner was shot and killed by officers on July 5th after Muncie police were called to a domestic dispute. Police say Warner was shot after he pointed a weapon at them. That weapon turned out to be a BB gun. But the Delaware County prosecutor says it appeared to be an actual gun and that the officers who opened fire justifiably did so in self-defense. A group of White County teachers has filed a federal lawsuit against the Sheriff's Department over a 2019 active shooter drill. The teachers say they were hit with plastic bullets that left them bruised and bleeding. The lawsuit was filed August 14th, alleging officers violated the teachers' constitutional rights during the drill at Meadow Lawn Elementary School in Monticello. They are seeking damages for emotional distress. Some teachers have suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety as a result. We reached out to the Sheriff's Department for Comment and we're told the county does not comment on pending litigation. Again, this happened January 4th, 2019 at Meadow Lawn Elementary in Monticello. The lawsuit alleges teachers did not consent to this type of training and that current active shooter models do not recommend shooting non-law enforcement participants. The teachers are represented by Indianapolis law firm Riley Bennett Egloff and the National Education Association. What a Friday. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Temperatures, they're going up a little bit each day as we go through the seven-day forecast. You'll see that in a bit, and the rain chances, pretty small. Here are your headlines then. Low rain chances for the weekend. I'll define low in a second. Humidity slowly creeping back up. We've been on quite a stretch here of very comfortable conditions. Heat flows back into the state Tuesday through Thursday of next week. It's been since uh, late July that we've had a temperature of 90 degrees or warmer. Showers, some thunderstorms south of the Ohio River. We've had some clouds stream into southeast Indiana as a result of that. As you look across the infield at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway toward downtown, great day for Carb Day today, although quiet day, obviously, without the fans around. 83 in Terre Haute and Lafayette. These are current conditions. Temperatures are anywhere around the metro area, uh, close to 80 degrees. High school football, don't forget, they're playing right now. The whistles are blowing. Temperatures, they'll be down to 70 degrees by the time we get to 1 o'clock in the morning temperatures tomorrow. They'll respond to lots of sunshine. We'll talk about warming up and where the best chance of showers and thunderstorms will be coming up. The eviction moratorium is officially expired and Hoosiers are already being faced with eviction warnings. WRTV Stephanie Wade speaks with a woman in fear she'll be kicked out of her home and has an expert's advice if you are in this situation. Jordan McKinney was laid off from her job in March because of COVID. She says she didn't qualify for unemployment benefits because she just started working there in February with the 17 month old daughter and falling behind in rent, plus being charged late fees on top of that. She tried working out a payment plan with her rental company. Whenever I got the letter, I called like the next day and I um, talked to them about it and I said, um, is there any way that I could pay like $100 or more a week? And they said, there's okay with that. The girl said she's gonna put it in the system. And like I said, whenever I called yesterday, they said nobody put it in the system. Her rental company informed her they already began the pre-filing eviction process and she had until August 31st to pay everything she owes in full or she'd be kicked out. Andrew Bradley with Prosperity Indiana says housing needs have been the top request to the Indiana 211 portal. Court data showing eviction filings are increasing. He recommends McKinney reach back out to her landlord in writing to demonstrate she's trying to make a payment plan. Also, reach out to her township trustee's office in writing and at least get on the wait list through the city's rental assistance program through IndyRent.org so she can prove she has been asking for help and willing to pay. 
Stephanie Wade, WRTV. We also connected her with groups willing to help with rent. We have those same resources for you on our website right now at WRTV.com. And continuing coverage of the coronavirus and its impact on Indiana, the State Health Department reports 13 more COVID-19 deaths. 2,992 Hoosiers have now died from the coronavirus, and more than 84,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus. More than 958,000 people have been tested in Indiana, with 8.8% testing positive. And data from the state also shows that about 37% of Indiana's ICU beds are available. COVID-19 patients are using around 11% of the ICU beds. Non-COVID-19 patients are using 52% of the beds. 82% of Indiana's ventilators are available as well. The pandemic has put so many things on hold, but for people needing life-saving organ donations, any delay could be detrimental. Some Hoosiers have stepped up to keep saving lives. WRTV's Troy Washington has that story tonight. I think it's just a great testament to um, humankind and, and the wonderful nature of Hoosiers. Despite a pandemic, the Indiana Donor Network is still hard at work saving lives, and in July, they even broke a monthly record, recovering 92 life-saving organs for patients in need. The way that our health care providers, our hospitals, um, the Department of Health, um, all came together to make sure that donation continued to be impactful and continued to not only happen to save lives, but actually um, advanced it during such complicated times is um, just an amazing feat. Which is amazing news because it appears even though the pandemic has changed how things are done, it hasn't hindered donor heroes. WRTV talked with a mother who plainly explained what the Indiana Donor Network does. I always felt like it was taking a negative and making it a positive. <laughs> That's how I've always felt. A negative for my son, but it was a positive outcome for someone else. Bonnie Morin lost her son Scott a decade ago, but even as she stayed by his side as he slipped away, she knew through him other families would find relief. He was able to um, give skin and bone and arteries. The only major organ he gave was a lung and he gave it to a gentleman that actually has the same lung disease I have. Knowing that her son will always be a hero helps to move the healing process along. Working for you, Troy Washington, WRTV. And to learn more about organ donation or to be registered to become a donor, you can go to indianadonornetwork.org. You may have seen them, flyers that appear to place the blame for problems in downtown Indy on specific groups of people. We have reaction coming up. These flyers raising some eyebrows and stirring some controversy. They were tossed around parts of downtown and handed out to people. The message focused on some of the serious issues downtown is now facing and placed blame on the mayor and the city county council. The flyers were anonymous. Besides targeting elected leaders, the message also took aim at those who live on city streets. WRTV's Cornelius Hawker set out to learn more about the flyers and met a woman who feels the message they're spreading is unfair. Barely a block away from luxury apartments and perfectly paved sidewalks is an area many in our city choose to ignore or perhaps don't even know exist. Several people call these sidewalks their home, but not by choice. I don't want to stay out here forever. This is Shay. For personal reasons, she asked that we not show her face. She wanted to talk to me because she says someone pulled up right next to their small group and threw out this flyer implying they were up to no good. Feel free to crap. So you weren't on my lawn doorstep and on my driveway. When have we ever, it's a poor party party right there. The flyer really upset Shay because she says she and so many others who are experiencing homelessness don't do any of the stuff it mentions, like drugs or harassing people for money. She tells me whoever made this flyer is out of touch. Let's switch out for a day. Have us walk past y'all. Oh, look at these people, not knowing what y'all have been through, not knowing anything about y'all. Incidents like this are the norm for folks who live on the streets. Cars honk, people yell, some are kind, some aren't. But Shay's focused on the future and won't let anything, including people's perception of her, get in the way. I'm trying to get my first tattoo is going to be a, um, a comma because nothing in my story is not finished yet. Yeah. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV.
Since the message on the flyer called out the mayor and the city county council, we asked them if they had any reaction besides their ongoing plans to address homelessness. So far, we have not yet heard back. 83 degrees right now. When will be almost 10 degrees warmer within the seven day forecast. When the heat returns, it will stay a while. That's all revealed next. Welcome back. All 33 drivers for this Sunday's Indy 500 were on track today. The final carb day practice ahead of Sunday's race. Brad Brown is inside the speedway with more on the past champion making another run at history. There are eight former champions in the field, but a large part of them are starting in the back. Given Chevy's difficulties in qualifying last weekend, that includes Elio Castroneves. He'll start 28th on Sunday's race, but Elio knows all about success from anywhere here at the Speedway. 20th Indy 500 for you, if I'm not mistaken. There aren't a lot of guys that have done this 20 times. 01 and 02, you come in and win the thing the first two years. What was it about Indianapolis, about the Oval, about that race that I guess just worked for a young Elio those first two years? You know, sometimes there, there are places that um, suits you, you know, and Indianapolis, not only was my first ever Oval win, wow. you know, but also my also 500 miles win. So imagine you, you don't, when, when you have a situation that, like that, you don't need to uh, spend a lot of effort because it, the place already suits you. So. It becomes, you know, when you develop, increasing and understanding a little more, you're just becoming better and better. We've talked a lot about the place being empty over the course of these weeks, and you as much as anyone have been a man of the fans over the course of your career. How do you find the energy that isn't there when there's 200,000 empty seats in that place? Even though they're not here, I believe they are here. You know, you see some people outside the track, uh, in the social media, they are watching. So they're sending the positive vibe. And I, again, like I mentioned before, many years, my last win was in 2009. I do believe a lot of people want to see history making. And uh, so I do believe, uh, I'm glad that we have in the race because even though they're not here, they're able to watch in TV and able to send that vibe and hopefully they can cheer and uh, and um, in the future we can have them cheer live. It is a place that I enjoy very much. It, it is a place that I, I, it changed my life. Now it's part of my life, you know, um, and uh, and for me, uh, just, to, just to be in this position, uh, it's a blessing in the sky. Now, along with his three wins, Elio's been a runner up here three times as well. Starting 28th, though, on Sunday, that's the furthest back he's been. He's never started outside of the top 20 in his first 19 starts here at Indianapolis. We'll see how it all pans out on Sunday. At the Speedway, Brad Brown, WRTV Trackside. Thank you, Brad. Our race day coverage goes digital this Sunday. Join Brad day first and Rafael Sanchez Sunday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. live on Facebook and WRTV.com. They will be inside and around the track with driver interviews and more. We'll have photo and video blogs to get you ready for this greatest spectacle in racing. Kevin, how's the weather looking? Uh, it looks good. Much better chance we'll be dry than wet. I will make a surprise appearance on that show race day morning just to update everyone about the weather. And, of course, the Thunderbirds will do the flyover at the uh, beginning of the race or during the national anthem. That's always special to see the military flyover. 84 Muncie, temperature one degree cooler in Indianapolis at 83 degrees. We've just seen the mid to high level clouds increase streaming in from the southeast. Nothing of consequence, not going to do any rain. And I think they'll continue, especially over the southern half of the state, to arrive. Comfortable night for high school football. Maybe a little warm for those in pads, but as the shade takes over, I think everybody becomes more comfortable through the evening hours. Temperatures in the 70s by the time uh, the games are ending. Okay, as you look at the temperature graph, Notice next week, Monday, we're right at 90, then we're up and over 90 degrees. It looks like we'll be able to maintain that for at least three days where temperatures are at 90 degrees or more. It's been 25 days since we've hit 90. Won't happen this weekend, 85 tomorrow, chance for a thunderstorm, 30%. As you look at Sunday, 86, the overall rain chance just 20%. Humidity levels slowly start to come up. Won't be too humid Saturday or Sunday. The peak humidity comes in the middle of next week. Right now, that hot, humid Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday stretch looks like it will stay dry. 
potential for thunderstorms increases Thursday and Friday. To the south, we show you the showers and some isolated thunderstorms south of the Ohio River. The clouds stream into the southern half of the state. And during the weekend, I think the better chance for showers and thunderstorms will be south and east of Indianapolis. Tomorrow afternoon, 85 degrees around 4 o'clock. The chance for thunderstorms increases in the eastern portion of Indiana. Put this timeline in motion. Couple of thunderstorms around Cincinnati, and then they come into western Indiana, starting to lose a little steam, but from Richmond to just southeast of Greensburg and southeast of Seymour, then fade away in the evening hours. Sunday, race day, temperatures in the upper 60s, first thing in the morning. 86, the magic number during the afternoon hours. By the time the checkered flag flies, temperatures will be in the mid 80s cooler south and east portions of the state because I think you'll have more in the way of cloud cover. There's your forecast on Sunday. Again, these are very random pop-up shower and thunderstorms. We'd have to be unlucky to catch one at the intersection of 16th and Georgetown. Won't take luck at all. We'll all get the heat next week. Temperatures Tuesday through Thursday, 90 degrees or warmer. Overnight low temperatures will be back into the low 70s. Quite a contrast from the 50s that we enjoyed uh, the last several uh, nights of comfort, certainly. Uh, we'll be back with more of the news at 7 right after this. This recall alert tonight, more than 52,000 Hasbro water guns sold at Target are being recalled due to lead concerns. The guns in question, the Super Soaker XP-20 and the Super Soaker XP-30. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says the decorative sticker on the water tank of the toys have lead levels in the ink that exceed federal lead content bans. Hasbro says a manufacturer got the stickers from an unauthorized supplier without Hasbro's consent. Lead exposure in kids can lead to behavioral disorders and other health effects and is toxic if ingested. The commission says no injuries have been reported. If you have one of these water guns, immediately take it away from kids and get in touch with Hasbro on how to get a full refund. The age of the smartphone doesn't appear to be helping students in the classroom. A study out of Rutgers found the ability to quickly look up answers online hurts a student's ability to remember the information. Researchers used information for more than 2,400 students over an 11-year period. They found in 2008, only 14% of students scored lower on tests than homework. In 2017, that number jumped to 55%. Eating a vegetarian diet might help protect you from having a stroke. A group of 1,400 vegetarians and 3,500 non-vegetarians were followed for six years. In that time, the vegetarians suffered three strokes, while non-vegetarians suffered 28. Researchers then followed a larger group for nine years and found non-vegetarians suffered four times as many strokes as vegetarians. The average age of all participants was 50. Researchers defined a vegetarian for the study as someone who did not eat meat or fish. And a little honey might help fight off a sore throat and other ailments just as well or better than antibiotics. Scientists reviewed more than 1,700 cases. They found honey helped fight off symptoms of sore throat, cough, and runny noses. In some cases, doctors found honey reduced symptoms by a day or two. They say honey can be a helpful alternative because it is less expensive than most medications readily available and has little or no side effects. They do remind people that honey should not be given to children under one year old. And Mark, you know how much I always love my honey after all these shows we do. <laughs> And now it helps, right? Absolutely. Lounging on a pool will no longer be just a dream for some people with sun allergies. You're looking at a blow-up bathing suit. It's made from latex sheeting that has uh, three valves that allow you to inflate and deflate yourself. And as you can see, the all-white design is broken up by a shape of a black bathing suit, which wraps around the body. The suit is part of a wider sun allergy collection. The design is very personal to the designer, a Spanish artist called Sigi. The artist has been allergic to the sun since childhood. That's ingenuity, isn't it? 85 tomorrow, rain chance small on Sunday. Have a good weekend. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you at 11.